recovering from identity theft is an overwhelming process that demands substantial time and effort. The time spent fixing this situation can be extensive and you'll often find yourself doing a lot of administrative work during the process. Hey everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the connection between malware and identity theft. Nowadays, with everything going digital, from jobs to financing and even entertainment, the risk of falling victim to identity theft is higher than ever. And that's because there are around 450,000 new pieces of malware being discovered every day. And one of the most devastating outcomes of malware is basically identity theft. And so in this video, I'll be explaining what malware is the close relationship it has to identity theft and how you can protect yourself from such a threat using a reliable antivirus and other mitigation techniques. Speaking of antiviruses, if you're looking to get a reliable service to protect your device from malware, I'll be leaving some in-depth reviews on antiviruses I personally recommend as well as some discounts in the description down below. Well, malware, which is short for malicious software, is any program or file that is intentionally harmful to a computer network or server. There are a bunch of different types of malware, including computer viruses, worms, trojans, horses, ransomware, and spyware. Now, if you want to know what the differences between these are, I've already made a video talking about them which I'll also leave in the description down below. But essentially, these malicious programs steal, encrypt, and delete sensitive data, alter or hijack core computing functions, and monitor end users' computer activity. This malware can infect any type of network and device and is designed to harm them and their users in some way. Now, depending on the type of malware and its goal, this harm may present itself differently to the user or endpoint. In some cases, the effect malware has is relatively mild, and in others, it can be disastrous, such as identity theft. But no matter the method, all types of malware are designed to exploit devices at the expense of the user and to the benefit of the criminal. All right, now there are a bunch of different ways malware can facilitate identity theft. For example, one of the main mechanisms by which malware enables identity theft is data exfiltration. Malware is known for siphoning sensitive personal information, including social security numbers, bank account details, and passwords from a compromised system. Once these cyber criminals has this sort of information, they can use it for a bunch of illegal activities, such as fraudulent credit card transactions, fraudulent tax filings, or creating new financial accounts under your name. Another way malware could facilitate identity theft is through key loggers. Now, if you're not familiar with what key loggers are, they're basically a specific type of malware designed to record every keystroke you make on your computer. By doing that, key loggers can collect a lot of sensitive information, including login credentials, credit card numbers, and other personal data. The data is then sent to the attacker, who can either use it to steal your identity or carry out financial fraud attacks. Next, we have phishing attacks. Now, malware is often deployed in conjunction with phishing attacks which are social engineering tactics designed to trick you into revealing sensitive information willingly. For example, you'll get an email telling you that you've won a hard to miss deal and asking you to click on a sneaky malware written attached file or link. These are basically called phishing emails and websites that can drive by download malware on your device, which would then fully compromise your system and proceed to harvest your personal data, ultimately leading to identity theft. Now, before we move on to some of the effects malware-enabled identity theft attacks could have, let's take a quick break to talk about today's sponsor, Surfshark One. Now, if you're interested in Surfshark, we have an exclusive discount we can offer for fans of our channel, and I'll show you how it works. So if you directly go to Surfshark's website, the best deal you'll currently get for let's just say the starter plan is three free months for $1.99 a month on the two year plan. And you'll get a extra month for free as you go up tiers, which is really a great deal. However, if you use our exclusive coupon code, you'll be getting the same deal, but with an extra free month on all the plans, which is the best deal available on the internet for Surfshark right now. So I would definitely recommend. 
consequences of malware-enabled identity theft can be severe and far-reaching. Here are some of the significant impacts. For starters, identity theft often results in financial losses for the victims. Cyber criminals can use stolen information to make unauthorized transactions, open new credit card lines, or drain bank accounts. You might even find yourself responsible for debts you did not incur, which can sometimes take years to resolve. You'll also have the emotional toll of identity theft which is not to be underestimated. Finding out that your personal information has been compromised can lead to feelings of violation, fear, and vulnerability. You might even experience anxiety, stress, and difficulty trusting online platforms, potentially affecting your overall well-being. Other than that, identity theft can ruin a person's reputation, which would take a lot of time and overwhelming effort to fix. Also, if the stolen information is used to commit criminal activities, you might even find yourself facing legal trouble, which is a situation that no one wants to be in. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, recovering from identity theft is an overwhelming process that demands substantial time and effort. In such cases, you must report the theft to the appropriate authorities, dispute fraudulent charges, and take a bunch of steps to secure your personal information. The time spent fixing this situation can be extensive and you'll often find yourself doing a lot of administrative work during the process. With that being said, there are a few steps that you should take to protect yourself from malware-enabled identity theft attacks or any cyber attacks in general. For starters, you should always be using reliable antivirus and anti-malware software that can detect and remove malicious programs before they can compromise your system. If you don't already have any or would like to check out some options, I'll be leaving some in-depth reviews on antiviruses I personally recommend in the description down below. You should also frequently update software and operating systems, as it helps patch known vulnerabilities that cyber criminals may exploit. Keeping your device up to date is a big step in improving your overall cybersecurity. Another thing you should be doing is basically understanding the tactics used in phishing attacks, which could help a lot in avoiding falling victim to them. Be careful when clicking on links or downloading attachments from unknown sources, and be skeptical of unsolicited emails requesting personal information. If you want to know more about these social engineering attacks and know how they work, I made a video diving deep into the topic, which I'll leave in the description down below. Other than that, try using strong and unique passwords for each online account, as it can help a lot in preventing unauthorized access. Using a password manager to generate and store complex passwords can generally enhance your security, and you can even find some of these features in some antivirus programs such as Norton. And finally, try to enable multi-factor authentication, also known as MFA, whenever you can. These MFAs add an additional layer of security by requiring multiple forms of authentication, such as a password and a one-time code sent to your smartphone. Enabling MFA whenever possible makes it more challenging for attackers to compromise your accounts. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. Now you know the correlation between malware and identity theft and some ways you can protect yourself from such a security theft. Don't forget to check the links in the description in case you're looking for an antivirus as I've left a bunch of in-depth reviews on antiviruses that I personally recommend as well as discounts. Also, if you liked the content or found it useful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to see more of it. And if you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments as I love to interact with you guys. And that will be all for today and I'll see you in the next one.